Okay, recently we uh, posted a video of grinding a spindle inside on this milling machine and somebody had posted a comment about it looked like engineering from another country, uh, continent, excuse me. Uh, so, okay, uh, they don't understand what's going on. A lot of people don't. And here's what was going on. Let's imagine for a second that this is the spindle in the machine. Bearing, bearing, precision surface on the inside. If we were making this, well, first off, the machine got damaged. So that was the reason why we were doing this. We didn't just do this as a regular routine fun. It was to repair the machine. The machine had a crash and the crash was hard enough that the surface inside the spindle was off. I don't know if the spindle was off because it was squished or if it was off because the spindle itself got bent. If the spindle got bent, then we will know over time because these, this bearing will no longer be in a line where it should be and it will wear quickly and we'll have trouble. We've been using the machine, it's working fine. So it will be a matter of long term before we know whether there was actual bearing damage from the crash or not. But since that's such a major repair, we chose not to take that thought as to what was wrong and we decided it's just squished material <laughs> or a minor bend. Now let's get back to the fact of spindles accuracy and what we did. Okay, if we have two bearings here and we want the spindle to run accurately, one way we can do that is we can extremely accurately grind the inside at the same time that we grind the mount for the outside. We do the same for the other side. Now we are as accurate as whatever the inaccuracy of the bearings are. But that's still inaccurate because the bearings are not perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect entity, especially when you start stacking things. Whatever run out there is, it adds up. On precision bearings, most of them have a mark for the high spot. Some people put the high spot to one side so that the spindle, what little bit of run out, and I'm talking only a part of a tenth of a thousandth, almost nothing but they make it so that the run out is together so that the bearings are not fighting each other. Other people put the run out across from each other so that the average run out keeps a near perfect run out in the middle rather than having the spindle run out as a total out of round. But stop and think about this for a little bit. If we wanna really make the inside of this spindle true with how the bearings run, if we true it when it's running in the bearings it's gonna be using. That's how we make this surface exactly correct with those bearings. We true it when it's running on these bearings. Now there's no run out other than any out of round that the bearing may have in itself because you can't make a round if it's not running round. You're still gonna have that, but you wouldn't have a out of round as far as positioning goes. So it's really a normal everyday occurrence if you need to repair a spindle, you don't have to send it in to somebody and spend hundreds of hours rebuilding it, you can regrind it. You can do the same thing on uh, an engine lathe. You take the, the tapered surface and you just carefully grind it, grind the face, make them flat again where your D1 spindle is on there. Don't, don't give up just because it's gotten beat up because some idiot didn't clean the chips out when they mounted it. Go ahead and you can fix them. Um, it's part of what we do. The tool post grinder, um, it's made originally to be a handy thing you add on a lathe, but they're used on all kinds of things. As far as makeshift goes, the biggest makeshift I ever did with a tool post grinder, we were resharpening some shear blades for a sheet metal shear, they were 10 foot long. We had them on a engine lathe with a tool post grinder, a bigger tool post grinder on the engine lathe, running back and forth, had a separate motor for running the carriage back and forth. It was a totally ludicrous setup, but it did allow us to grind blades that we didn't have another way to do. Um, I would not do that again, but they're a tool. You just use them like any other tool, and that's what we were doing. Now. What was a little bit off in our setup as far as not being a good setup, we had a long quill on our grinder. That long quill meant that there was a lot of movement out at the end here. So we really should have had a shorter spindle and they make shorter spindles, but I hadn't found one for less than 800 bucks and I didn't really want, want to buy it. I was shopping for one in the meantime before we used the one that I already had used in the past on another machine 
And uh, yeah, I was just being conservative in money. And we may have to do this again anyway, so why get that worried about it? When we were all done, we had about a half a thousandths or five ten thousandths of an inch of inaccuracy in our spindle. Um, I don't care. That's better than most of the holders that you put in the machine. Uh, you know, in, in real world terms, when you get to looking at used ones, they're not that perfect. Um, or even a lot of the new ones. Uh, I would have liked it to be better, and it wasn't run out that we had. That was, that was a portion of the spindle that was not getting contact. As far as run out goes, we had zero run out with an indicator. It was, it was showing that it was perfect. But we had an area in the front that had good contact. We had an area in the back that had good contact. There was a middle area where we had about four to five ten thousandths of a gap in there. And if anything goes wrong, the area in the back and the front will just suck down and it'll eventually contact the other area too as those beat down. It's, it shouldn't be a problem. It's not being a problem. And uh, it's just part of the real world. We can imagine that uh, this, the only way to make a spindle is by putting this in and making it perfect, sanctifying it and using perfect bearings. But even with sanctified perfect bearings, it's not perfect. There is always gonna be some error. Error. And that's another way also, while I was mentioning about this, you could also, instead of, um, there's some inaccuracy when I was talking about these two being machined together at once, turn it around and do these two. Okay, well now we're not dead in line, so we've got a little bit of surface off between this one and this one, since we didn't do it in exactly the same setup. This is also presuming that the machine we did them on is perfect and had absolutely no run out. So you gotta come back to what machine that's absolutely perfect, nothing wrong in the whole universe that we made this on. Uh, the fanciest, newest machine, there's always some inaccuracy. We, we fail ourselves when we start thinking that everything's going to be perfect. It needs to be good. It needs to be as good as makes sense for what we're doing. Um, you'll never get it perfect. Perfect. The only thing you can have perfect is a perfect in your mind, such as I am perfect, and I am. I am perfectly me, you know, qualified. I am perfectly me. I'm not a perfect human being. I'm not a perfect animal. I am not a perfect anything other than a perfect me. There's no deflection from it being me. But two pieces of steel, they're never perfectly the same. One of them has an extra atom or two than the other. And even if they both have exactly the same number of atoms, they're not the same atoms. The spin of the electrons is slightly different. They're not the same. Anyway, uh, I think we did a reasonable repair, more accurate than uh, most shops would bother with for having an old machine go again. And I just wanted to explain that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just a, we thought we'd go gobble it up with uh, throwing a grinder down the throat of it. It was actually to make it more accurate.